This is my review of Dr. Stone, Chapter 120, Top Secret. And uh, apparently this, ep this chapter opens up with a revelation that uh, Jinro is the most attractive girl in the harem. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm really not sure why he was picked first among all the new members of the harem to uh, service the master. And uh, I don't think I want to know. Unfortunately, this whole argument he gets in with Kohaku is very easily overheard by Mozu, who realizes that Kohaku is definitely the traitor. Which wasn't that much of a secret to begin with. Uh, you guys were not good spies. Thankfully, uh, Jinro has a weapon at his disposal. A pineapple. A pineapple filled with ethyl uh, acetate, which essentially uh, will make whoever sniffs it uh, get all dizzy and fall over, more or less. So he's got it ready. He's going to meet the master. And, uh, yeah. I mean, this just, he, he does not handle it well. He immediately starts telling the truth. Like, yeah, uh, I, I, I'm not really not sure how I got here. One thing led to another. I'm actually, uh, before we can finish off, uh, oof. The whole, uh, advisor shows up and, oh God, he just goes from comical villain to, Straight up monster right here. I mean, I get it. Yes, this is a harem. The women are taken against their will and forced to do bad things, but... God, this line. So before that, this old man will teach you a thing or two about love. Satisfy me and the master is all yours. Ugh. I, I felt slimy just reading that line. I actually think I need to go uh, wash out my tongue with salt and salt words to get it out of my mouth. It is... Ugh, it is disturbing on any every level. And what's more, he seems to get off on the fact that he's struggling, which, oof. Bad person, bad person, bad person. All right, then we head back to Kawaku and Mozu, and uh, apparently that little string uh, rope thing that Kawaku has been uh, pulling with on her leg this entire time is actually a knife weapon. How it works, I'm not entirely clear, but she's able to seamlessly and very easily take out essentially all the guards and the ones that are left behind mozu takes them out because uh apparently she's too pretty to kill given the harem is his only source of entertainment uh no one's allowed to kill a pretty girl without a say so which is uh interesting i have kind of a weird feeling that they could still end up making him a good guy but it's seeming less and less likely now. Anyway, uh, the sound of their fighting managed to distract the advisor long enough for Jinro to spill around the uh, acetate juice and makes the minister so dizzy that uh, Jinro can essentially escape. But then he realizes, oh, if I don't uh, do anything now, Kawaku's going to be pissed at me. I'm gonna, I gotta take this opportunity. So uh, he goes in and he takes a look at the master. And his first thought is, this guy looks a lot like Soyuz. Which makes a lot of sense. I mean, when uh, Amaryllis first saw him, she commented on how he had a royal figure. So I'm assuming at some point she either saw this master or the master before it or somebody. And she thought that they looked alike. So that's why she thought he was the master. It also makes more sense on why he actually had to flee the freaking island. The master was petrified and then his wife or whatever member of his harem had Soyuz, their son. I was like, oh shit, if I don't get out of here now... He's going to petrify me, too. Uh, I'm next in line for the throne, after all. But what's even more interesting is uh, good old Master of the Islands. He's missing half his face, which is so very, very unnerving. I mean, I mean, like, really unnerving. You can see his freaking teeth. The top layer broke off, and you can see the teeth layer underneath. That's, that's, that's dark. I mean... You, you know, there are people who would return to stone, but sometimes you forget just how disturbing it really is. I mean, they have, like, stone teeth and organs and all the other stuff inside them. You just haven't seen it yet. And unfortunately, Jinro waited a little too long. The uh, advisor's woken up, and he's about to murder him. And, again, what remains one of the creepiest uh, shots of the entire series. You mustn't lie now. Meanwhile, Kawaku is still fighting Mozu. So, yeah. 
chapter confirmed a lot of things. Uh, I'm thinking it's confirming that Soyuz is the master's son, therefore the rightful heir to the island, which I feel like that's going to be important. I don't know, maybe that woman that we saw petrified before is going to end up playing a role in it. I'm not sure. I'll come back to that. I mean, the master is missing like half his face, and I'm going to argue he's very almost certainly dead. I mean, if they do find like the missing piece and put it back on, I feel like it would have you know, degraded enough to the point where the two don't meet back up properly, but I might be wrong about that. It's hard to say. The regenerating effects have been shown pretty effective in the past, and he's only been, uh, you know, split for so his whole life, so let's say 10, 12 years. So it's entirely possible they could end up waking him back up if they find the right pieces. But I feel like just because they went to the effort of smashing him like they did, they're trying to say, no, he's done, he's gone. Honestly, I'm almost afraid of what happened. They tried to wake him up right now. I mean, he's missing a good chunk of his face. I think part of his brain as well. Yeah, the brain, the missing brain is the important part. I mean, the hair, the ear, the lower jaw, the beard. That, that all, That's all stuff that can be, you know, patched over or whatnot. But I'm fairly certain he's missing a, at least a good chunk of his brain in his right eye here. Pretty sure if they uh, woke him up like this, he would instantly bleed to death and die. Which would be very unpleasant, and I do not want to see that happening. So yeah, next week, uh, Kawaku versus Mozu. I don't think they have the uh, droid quite ready yet. They might end up needing to wait for after Kawaku gets petrified or captured or whatever and interrogated, and then come in and rescue attempt, and the rescue attempt looks like it's going to end poorly when they launch the petrification uh, weapon, but then they're like, oh no, we got your petrification weapon, ha ha ha! That'd definitely be interesting. So yeah, uh, let me know what you thought in the comment section down below. What do you think of the master of the island? Uh, I think we can all agree the advisor is probably the one that did this to him. Though it's also possible, you know, he just did it by accident when he was playing around with petrification beam. That'd be something. Honestly, I'm thinking it's more just uh, Master Mozu and the girl whose name I can't remember. Just wanted more power and uh, decided, if we petrify the master, we get all the power for ourselves. We get the friggin' island. It was essentially the same uh, thought that Senku and the rest had. If we can get the petrification powered away from them, we own the island. We're in command. That's just my thought again. Let me know your thoughts down below. Be sure to like, subscribe. Until next time. Peace.